Hey summoners, make sure that you've subscribed to the Mobilix YouTube channel and hit that bell button. That way you're always up to date and part of our notification squad. It's your challenger coach here, Moriarty, with our newest Mobilitics tier list video for patch 9.11. Though this wasn't the biggest of patches, we still have a decent amount of changes to the rankings, so let's get started. For the top lane patch changes, though many mini reworks are on PBE, for champions such as Malphite, Teemo, or Wukong, the only actual changes are going to be to Jace by nerfing his Q damage, and the nerfs to Akali passive damage slash energy regen. The nerfs to Jace were done to hurt his playstyle of lock in Jace, then auto win lane, while the nerfs to Akali were done to hurt her mid to late game damage output, particularly in the 1v1 side lane, because she wasn't beatable there. In terms of the actual changes to the top lane list, we have Nasus, Garen, Urgot, Yorick, maintaining S tier, with Tom Kench, who's my pick of the week, joining them. Tom Kench is currently the best tank for literally carrying your team in the current meta, ever since Riot shifted some of his power from utility to raw fighting power. Even while building full tank, he's able to outduel some of the monster early game champions in the meta such as Renekton, and in one of my challenger games recently, I saw a TK outduel a Fiora late game while down 150 CS. That's how insane his 1v1 potential is versus melee champions. Ahead or behind, he's just going to win. When playing him, you'll want to start off with a Sunfire Cape, followed by building whatever defensive boot options let you win your lane phase. Then, if you're snowballing, which is pretty likely with Dom Kent, you'll want to build a Titanic Hydra for that extra damage and carry potential. One of his major weaknesses is that he lacks late game teamfight potential. So you might be thinking to yourself, what if they play passive in lane and try and outscale the Kench? Well, do you really think that a Renekton or Riven player is not going to fight you in lane? That they're actually going to listen to this advice? That they're going to play it safe, not trade, scale, nah, they're always going to fight you. So when you beat them in lane, make sure when you eat them to spam taunt and laugh and mastery emote to make them know that you've completely outplayed them with a tank. Moving to A tier changes, we have Kale falling down from A tier to B tier, due to how many early game lane bullies are just destroying her during the lane phase. To take her place, we have the High Major Commodore of the First Legion, Third Multiplication, Double Admiral Artillery Vanguard Company, Lord Major Admiral of the Second Legion's Forward Artillery Cavalry Multiplication, also known as CLUD, moving from B to A tier. The top lane right now is all about skirmishers who like to scrap early and fight often, which is exactly what CLUD excels at. Or you can just bypass all of that and play a ranged top lane or auto win the lane phase. The choice is yours. If you do choose to pick up Kled, I recommend taking Ignite on him so that you can focus on stomping lane, then using your ult to roam or get back to lane if needed, like you would if you actually took teleport. Finishing up in top lane for the standard list, we have some minor changes like moving Rumble back up to A tier or adding an Aurelia slash Quinn to B tier due to improved matchups. At the top of the high low list, we have a decent amount of S tier changes. Silas, Aurelia, Akali maintain S tier, but both Jax and Jace move down to A tier with the newcomer AA Trox taking their place. Here are some explanations as to why this happened. Akali will remain in S tier for now, despite her nerfs, as she was grossly overkilling her targets. But we will be keeping an eye on her to see if she falls down to A tier or not. Aatrox earned his spot by ruthlessly crushing his opponents in lane, followed by winning a skirmish, 1v2, or 1v3 due to his absurd healing, where someone inevitably exclaims his rework was terrible and they liked the original Aatrox more before they ruined him. Which to be honest is a lie, because no one played the old Aatrox. In his current state, once he gets a lead, it's too hard to stop him from snowballing, even with grievous wounds. Which is why we placed him in S tier. Jax's matchups just got a whole lot worse ever since his most popular counterpick, Renekton, got stronger. While well, Jace was dropped down to his direct nurse, impacting his ability to win lane, which is all he's good for. Before leaving top lane, I do want to mention the rising popularity of both Pike and Camille, who are starting to dominate high yellow top lane, so tune back into our mid patch update and QA video next week for a more in depth look on how these champions work. Jungle patch notes are by far the longest this time around, with nerfs to Master Yi's attack speed and Q damage, which hurt his early game a lot. Buffs to Gragas' base stats in terms of HP and base AD which should help his early game not be so dumpster tier, making him move up to trash tier. These buffs are nice, it's just that he's performing so poorly at the moment, I don't think this is what he needs to make it to B tier just yet. We have nerfs to Karthus' entire jungle kit, with base damage and AP ratio being decreased on his R Requiem, which should hurt him quite a bit. Nerfs to Ramus' late game damage, with reduced R and passive damage at later ranks, but Unlike Karthus, Ramus doesn't actually rely on this to win games, so he'll only be slightly impacted. 
we got a nerf to Amumu's passive damage, which just like Rammus, is small enough not to impact his ranking. We also have a buff to the Jungle Dog Warwick's healing on Q, which as we've seen recently on champions like Renekton or Darius, when you buff a champion's healing, who has good 1v1 or 1v2 potential, they tend to perform significantly better due to being able to clutch more dueling situations early game, allowing for more consistent snowballing. And finally, we have a change to Zac with a revert to his alt returning to Let's Bounce, with a slight nerf to his Q slow, but buff to his W as they added an AP ratio. With the addition of the recent runic echoes buff, you may see a return of AP Majin Buu. We will be adding him to B tier for now, but we think with how much easier it is to use Let's Bounce compared to the current ultimate and an AP build on the rise, he could sneak into A tier. Personally, I like this change, as I hated watching my team Zac cosplay a pancake, bail his ult, then split into four for the enemy team to devour. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the jungle list itself. In S tier, we have Vi, Ramus, Amumu, Wallabear, and Nunu. We had Jax fall out of S tier to A tier, quite frankly because the other S tier junglers are just overperforming right now, and he just doesn't fit in anymore. Master Yi, on the other hand, has been talked about quite a bit recently, with Riot intending to close the gap between its win rate in low elo and high elo only to fail last patch, making the gap even larger. This patch, Riot just said we'll nerf him at all ranks till we figure something better out. With his early game getting hit, we believe he will drop from S tier to A tier as nerfs to his clear speed on a farm heavy jungle like E, along with nerfs to his dueling are harsh. You would think he would fall down harder on our list, it's just that he is currently performing at such a monstrous level with both super high win rate and one of the highest play rates, he has somewhat of a safety net. As for A tier changes, we have some minor movement from Shivana and Jarvan dropping to B tier, along with Karthus who dropped to B tier due to his nerfs. The last change I want to highlight is Warwick moving from B to A tier, as this is somewhat of a prediction. As mentioned during the patch notes section, when you buff the healing on a champion like Warwick, it can be the decider between losing a fight by one auto attack, or getting enough healing along with your passive to turn the duel, get your triumph proc, and then kill another person too, resulting in a situation that would normally cause your death being turned into a double kill. This is why he's my recommendation for champion to pick for this patch in the jungle. The high elo list, we have no movement in S tier, with Kha'Zix, Nunu, and Rengar returning. In A tier though, we do see some changes with Karthus once again falling to B tier due to his nerfs. Though, with this one, we may be undervaluing him, so he might return back to A tier during the patch update, so stay tuned. Hecarim ends up moving from B tier to A tier, as we misjudged his strength after the nerfs and are now properly placing him in A tier. Though he is an A tier, I would consider him A+, as he is a favorite of many challenger level players who like to solo carry and snowball with extremely hard to deal with tower dives. Every time I die to this champion and someone tells me in chat, just play safe, I instantly think to myself, where is safe? Show me the location outside of my fountain that is safe from this champion who just dove me from behind my tier 2 tower. Now, to less frustrating champions at high elo, we have Kane and Master Yi moving from A tier to B tier due to the AFK farm first 10 minute playstyle not being as impactful in this bracket. Not being a real champion for that amount of time is just not going to cut it consistently at the highest level. Onto the mid lane list where we don't have too many changes, but in S tier we still have Lux, Morgana, Ari, Nico, Malzabelter, and Velkos. Mid lane is still pretty solidified. Outside of a few small changes like Yasuo moving down from A tier to B tier due to having some awful matchups as of late, especially into champs like Malzahar, Nico, Vagar, or even Anivia. We also have Kassadin being moved into B tier from off the list. This is a champion that has been missing from the tier list for a decent bit and, as a Kassadin player myself, it made me a bit sad to see even Dopa drop him due to his early game being so terrible. Thankfully, he does actually have good matchups into a lot of the S and A tier champions like Anivia, Vagar, and Lux. Due to the game times being longer at lower levels of play, he gets time to scale. Despite this, the perception of Kassadin is always skewed, as he looks S tier in the games he gets a good matchup and hits level 16, but looks like a straight up win trader or completely invisible outside of the situation, which is why he's being placed in B tier as he struggles to perform consistently. For my recommendation of the patch for mid lane, I'd like to highlight Velkaz. Despite being called the Geometry Champion, he's actually easy enough to pick up that even if you failed that course at school, you could still get an A rank in League. Velkaz out of all of the artillery mages, is the one has the easiest time getting priority in lane. As his wave clear is very fast, while on a short CD, 
giving him the ability to both clear the wave and harass you under tower right after. He's quite similar to Lux in the sense that they are both safe and have the ability to one rotation someone, so try him out if you prefer a higher solo carry version of Lux that doesn't need a shield to ADC to get carried. For the high elo mid list, in S tier we have Talon, Ari, Silas, and Akali. While in A tier, we have Azir moving up from B tier as Peck and Wolf's pick of the patch. He thinks that Azir should be run with TP, Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, with a secondary rune setup of Mana Flow Ban plus Transcendence, and says that Azir has been seeing more play combined with the meta shifting away from always needing to fight Scuttle Crabs where Azir was weak, plus other mid laners getting nerfed over the last couple of patches, and Azir even getting a buff a few patches ago on 9.7. He has been seen using a new build path taking TP mid lane for his early game mana problems, plus presence of mind rather than going Luden's Echo. This allows him to rush Nasher's Tooth once again, normally after purchasing double Dorans on the first recall to help with his mana problems even further. For build path, start Doran's Ring, go double Dorans into Nasher's Tooth, Umbrellos, one defensive item, Zanyas or Banshees, then Void if they have MR, or Deathcap if they don't. Next up, we have another A tier champion as mid beast pick of the patch in Talia, but with a twist. Pick of the patch this week for him is going to be a weird one. Smite mid Talia with unsealed spellbook. With the decrease in the cost of runic echoes, it's become a very efficient power spike for AP mid laners right now, especially a mid laner that can easily clear camps such as Talia. You need to make sure that you don't purchase the jungle components first, however, or you will receive a monster hunter penalty and reduce gold. So you should start by buying the codex first and starting with the mana crystal then outright buy the runic echoes. He likes to run unsealed spellbook so that he can start with smite to get lane priority and early level 2. Then he can swap out for more efficient summoner spells as the game goes along like ignite, cleanse, tp, barrier or whatever he needs for the situation. He says that if this strategy is perfected it's easily one of the strongest in the game for mid laners. This tactic has been a bit of a trend over in eastern regions, like Korea or China, ever since Runic Echoes received a cost reduction. People have been testing out Smite mid with Spellbook on champions such as Orianna, Syndra, Cillian, or really anyone else who can get away with not needing a real keystone. I suggest, before jumping in on the bandwagon though, as shown at MSI, we should wait until we see this strategy picked up in a real region, like EU or even NA, to see if it's legit. As per usual, the bot lane list doesn't see a lot of changes, unless Riot decides to mess with crit items or makes on-hit items broken for a couple of patches to spice things up. In S tier, we do have Jinx, Draven, Ash, Misfortune, and Sivir, with the only real change being to Tristana moving from B to A tier just in time for her new awesome skin. Tristana herself hasn't received any changes lately, but the popularity of support she synergizes with has. For example, Taric, which even TL uses this combo, does very well with her, along with other enchanters like Nami or Janna, or even all-in supports like Nautilus, Leona, Thresh, or Pike. With the increased all-in potential from these champions, Tristana is allowed to play the landing phase for kills, because, as we all know, Tristana players just can't last hit, especially under tower, so kills are really her only option for income. The other champion I want to highlight is Jin, as my recommendation for bot lane this patch. Jin works well with all-in supports with CC, like Leona, Thresh, or Nautilus because he has great follow-up, burst, slash CC, or even mage supports like Brand or Zyra, can easily dominate lane, along with his electrocute and multiple E build, which I personally love using, as it's great in aggro lanes because it gives you that little extra bully potential you need to snowball early game. Try it out with IE, and three of them, or two IEs with Essence Reaver for slightly less damage but more utility. Jumping into bot lane high elo, we have Jinx, Draven, Ezreal, and S tier, with Sivir and Kai'Sa being added to S tier from A tier. Sivir is currently one of the strongest marksmen due to her ability to beat and provide utility from melee heavy compositions, who are extremely common right now as top lane, jungle, and mid lane have a lot of S tier melee champions like Silas, Akali, or Nunu. Kai'Sa returns to S tier after people found her new Muramana build that goes right into AP after, and for one of the only times in recent memory, her play rate is above that of Ezreal's. If you guys know of any marksman at any point in time that was more popular than Ezreal, let me know in the comment section below because I'm genuinely curious and amazed that this has ever happened. It does make sense though, as Kai'Sa can do it all. She's a marksman that is able to have mobility, make plays on her own, self peel, and carry in the late game without having to rely on skill shots because we all know marksmen can't land those. Lastly, we have the support tier list. 
For patch notes, we have Nurse aimed at the competitive viability of Galio, with the reduction of his base damage on W and E, while buffing his AP ratios in an attempt to reduce his all-in potential during the laning phase. This adjustment though, should not have a large impact on solo queue. We also have changes to Janna, where her W damage was nerfed at later ranks, but the CD goes down to compensate, while her E received a new passive that reduces its CD when you land an ability, along with some minor number adjustments. This buff is intended to nerf her W max poke in lane phase while buffing her mid to late game utility during teamfights. For most Janna's, this can be considered a huge buff, as they were too far back in lane to use W anyways, and would only use shield mid to late game. Due to how strong this buff is for the ideal playstyle of Janna, we believe she'll be S tier. Yumi also got a bunch of changes, but they are all cosmetic quality of life changes that are useless, just like a first time Yumi in lane. Our S tier roster this time around is Sona, Nautilus, Nami, with new additions Lux, Janna, taking the place of Taric and Brand, who fell down to A tier. Both Taric and Brand are getting crowded out of S tier this patch by how absurdly strong and easy to play the actual S tier supports are. Lux support is considered pretty troll by most of the community, due to how often off world mid laners build full AP on her without a single support item, which I feel should be reportable personally, but don't let that stigma get in the way of picking up Lux support, as she has been dominating due to her strong kill potential in lane, while having great scaling due to her massive team wide shield. While playing her, she has some flexibility with her keystone option by going offensive with Airy or Comet, or taking Aftershock versus heavy engage lanes so that she can stay safe and feed less. Try her out yourself as long as you take a support item, if you want to play a more aggressive styled enchanter. Speaking of enchanters, we have Will's pick of the patch, Yumi. Yumi is the newest support to hit Summoner's Rift, and she definitely made a splash due to her terrible win rate, which we will refer to more in the high elo section, so stay tuned. Many players overestimated her ability to AFK in lane, and it's those who are proactive and refraining from staying attached that are coming out ahead. Ideally, you will consistently look to hop to and from your anchor to poke the enemy down, not just attaching yourself and doing nothing. Her ability to dodge skill shots and escape immediate danger is great, but you can quickly turn sour due to inexperience from either you or your teammates, so careful when playing her. The last pick of the patch will be another enchanter, must be some kind of trend, with Hewitt picking Karma. Karma has been a shade of her former self since the nurse, but she has had a few tricks up her sleeve if you play her correctly. Karma can have a hard time against engaged supports like Nautilus. She can also struggle against high mobility assassins like Katarina because she doesn't have any immediate CC to shut them down before they can reset. You can adapt by taking barrier in these situations. Between the shields and healing from your mantra, it's easy to stay alive while still being aggressive. This lets you get to the late game, where you'll be spamming shields on your AD carry and using your mantra on your shield to cast defiance for team wide durability. For high elo support, we have some changes to S tier, with Nami moving down to A tier, while Rakan moved up from A to S tier to take her place, along with Thresh, Nautilus, and Sona remaining in S tier. Ever since his buff to solo queue, Rakan has been dominating the early game and the mid game, due to how reliably he can all in now, as it's quite hard to miss his W. As mentioned in the last update video for patch 9.10, Rakan is a unique champion, as he is an enchanter who have strong late game, while also being an all-in slash engage support, giving him high early game impact and priority. This combination of classes means that if he is at all viable, he will normally be at the top of the rankings. Hence why Nami moved down, as she can no longer compete with either the pure scaling of Sona, or the all-in potential of Thresh, Nautilus, or Rakan. The other champion I would like to highlight is Yumi, who is so bad on release, AD carry mains would get so angry at the mere sight of someone hovering her, they would instantly ban her. After her hotfix though, along with people adjusting to her true playstyle, which meant they had to plug in their mouse, her power skyrocketed, and now AD carry mains and high elo ban her not so that she does not end up on their team, but so she doesn't end up on the other team, because her laning phase is rather obnoxious and her scaling is absurd. I'm currently thinking of making a video on the differences between high elo and low elo yumis and how you can use these to better your own gameplay, so let me know in the comment section below if you like this video idea. Thanks again for watching our tier list video for patch 9.11. Feel free to ask us any questions in the comment section below for us to answer in the next Q&A and update video. And as always, be sure to check out mobilitics.gg 